Oh, I can't see anybody. Okay, I won't be able to see chat, so just let me know if anyone chats. Okay, I'm ready. Cool. All right. Well, thanks for joining. Um, this is the supporters webcast, um, the third one of the year, and I'm Megan Sanicky, the executive director. Um, it's my first webcast in this new role, so I'm pretty excited about that. Um, with me is uh, Rachel Friesen, who oversees uh, DrupalCon, our events program, and Tim Lennon, who oversees our engineering department. And we are being supported today by Brendan, who is, uh, I think his picture is, is uh, gone, but uh, great, great teamwork here. And we wanted to come together and tell you some uh, great happenings that are going on at the association, what we're doing for the community. So just a little housekeeping. Um, we just ask that you remain muted during the call, uh, so that way we have good quality. Uh, but we do want to take questions, uh, so please use the chat window to do that. And if you hear any news you want to share, please go ahead, and you could even um, tag us on Twitter at Drupal Association. We have a few news items. Um, from the association that I'm going to cover. And then Rachel is going to uh, give an overview of DrupalCon Dublin. And Tim will be giving an overview of some improvements that have been happening on Drupal.org over the last couple months. And as you probably know, DrupalCon Dublin's at the end of September. And we also have a Global Training Days coming up in September as well. So these are two programs you probably want to check out. If you want more information, reach out to me or anyone at the association, and uh, we're happy to help you get involved. And of course, before I get started, I just want to thank all of the supporting partners. So you can see that our program has really been growing. We have more companies stepping up to support the association. And this program's um, fees go to fund Drupal.org improvements. And they are really invaluable and have made a real impact on what we've been able to do. So thank you. So let's dive into the Drupal Association news. It's always good just, you know, starting as a new executive director to um, really make sure you're clear on the mission because this is what my job is to make sure we're serving it. So I wanted to just share this again with all of you. Um, you know, in short, the association is here to unite the open source community so we can help build and promote the software. And over the last several years, we've been doing a lot to help build the software, uh, help the community build the software, sorry about that. And we've been doing that um, with investments on Drupal.org with lots of tooling that you can see such as uh, Drupal CI and Composer. And uh, on, on the DrupalCon side, we have we do a lot there um, from training up talent so people can contribute more, um, getting them into sprints and giving them workshops to learn how to contribute back to the project with mentors. Uh, we have core conversations so we can you know, get the right people together in a room to talk about what needs to happen next for the project. So there's just a lot that we've been doing uh, to help uh, the community build the software. And that was a, a really important investment so that we could play our part to get Drupal 8 out the door into the marketplace. And um, we're going to talk a little bit about what um, we're doing on that build side of the mission. Um, but I also you know, want to focus a little bit on the promote side, because um, in the past we've done, we've definitely done some things to promote Drupal. Um, you know, we started jumping more into issue queues uh, to approve case studies and get good case studies up on Drupal.org. And at DrupalCon, uh, we have higher ed summits, and um, that's a great one-day customer event where um, those that are using or want to use Drupal for um, higher ed or nonprofit or media come together and they do peer-to-peer -peer networking and get education on how to kind of push the envelope with Drupal. Um, so those are some great ways that we're promoting Drupal, Oh, as well as helping support the community promote the Drupal 8 launch. So that was a, another big thing that we've, we've done. So as we move forward, we want to really, um, you know, put emphasis on the promote side, really expanding what we do, uh, because there's a lot more that needs to be done now that Drupal 8 is out the door. And so I want to talk a little bit about some of our focus for the next couple of months. So on the Unite 
uh, unite the community to build the software on that part of the mission, um, what we have decided to do is to sustain the work that we're doing, um, not taking anything away. Obviously, we still want to make sure you have all the tools and all the training that you need to get the community together and keep building the software. Uh, but we're kind of putting, uh, hitting the pause button on doing a lot of new features to um, support this part of the mission. And that's because, well, two things. One, we did have a reduction in staff. So that um, was something we needed to do just to align our expenses with our revenue. Um, <clears throat> and now that we're, we've done that, uh, we have a smaller team on the engineering side that Tim's managing. They're still doing a great job and pushing a lot out to help the community. Um, but we do have, because of the smaller team, we do need to uh, focus on sustaining what we have. Meanwhile, what we're doing is um, studying where we want to go next. We want to have a holistic overview of our architecture um, to make sure that that developer experience and the tools that we have um, are the right ones. There's been a lot of changes where people are used to a different kind of developer experience. And so we want to just really look at that to make sure that we're providing the best experience ourselves, modernizing tools where we can, um, and also looking to see where um, it makes sense to try different kinds of tooling. So we are going to do a study, um, and then as we grow um, our funding back up, we'll know where we need to invest and start making changes. So that's what's happening um, in terms of our support for the developer community. Certainly won't see any, um, any decrease there. We're just going to do some studies to see where we grow in the future on that front. And then on the other side of the mission, uh, where we unite the community to promote the software, um, we want to first start with understanding the customer. So I've been with the association six years. We've done a lot of work over the time to understand the developer community and what their needs are. Um, and then also the web development agencies and what their needs are. And actually I'm doing interviews to continually um, stay up to date on changing needs. Uh, and, but we have never really reached out to the customer or the prospective customer to really understand what their needs are or to bring them into the community. Um, and so we're going to start there. I'm actually doing lots and lots of calls to customers. If you have any customers you'd like me to talk to, please let me know. Um, and so with that kind of information, we can understand how we can do a better job promoting Drupal. And one way uh, we want to do this is through Drupal.org. It is very much um, a site for our developer community, although we do have aspects that can help um, you know, provide an adoption journey for customers and prospective customers. But it needs to be tightened up. And um, uh, you know, it needs, there's just it needs to be a nice refresh on that. So we're looking at the front page to start with <clears throat> to see how we can use this as a, a great adoption journey to really explain what is Drupal, um, why you should adopt Drupal, start highlighting case studies. Um, letting them know where uh, to go next to get information, connecting them to Drupal shops if they're looking for um, some, some help right away. And so we're starting some work there, and uh, the interviews with the customers will let us know what will really resonate. Um, so that's going to be um, a great way for them to contribute back to the project, is helping us in that way. Um, some other things we're looking to do is create um, a solution section off of the main navigation, where we will have different pages about Drupal as a solution. So you'll notice that most of our content over the years has been very developer focused. So you see a lot of content about what's the top 10 uh, Drupal modules, or how do you do this, or how do you migrate, whatever, you know, very developer focused. Um, whereas a customer wants to hear about solutions, as I'm sure many of you know. And so we're gonna start creating pages about Drupal for higher ed, Drupal for nonprofit, Drupal for gov. And uh, that way, anyone from any vertical will be able to start seeing content um, that can help them understand how um, other companies like theirs uh, had their problems solved or new opportunities created by uh, Drupal working as part of a bigger solution. Um, so I'm really excited to start working on, on that front. And then, of course, at DrupalCon, we want to um, 
focus more on uh, ways to promote the software, and we do a lot already. Um, the, you know, actually DrupalCon itself is a bit of a sales tool. I've talked with some customers at the executive level that said, well, my developer is the one who told me about Drupal and he started to get involved and he told me to come to DrupalCon. And I saw how people were so engaged and so passionate in this open source project that I knew this is this is the way to go. Like if there are this many people this excited to make this great project uh, that I want to be a part of it. And I want to I want to bank my career on this. Um, and I've heard that from several customers, which is really exciting. So I mean, DrupalCon itself is a sales tool. It just shows the power of Drupal. But we are doing things already to bring in customers um, so that they can uh, either deepen their footprint um, with Drupal or decide to use Drupal you know, start, you know, maybe they're evaluating. And we do that through the summits, those one day summits that I mentioned earlier. Um, and they're really uh, successful. The higher ed summit always sells out. We just brought in the government summit and the um, media summit, which did really well. And we want to see how we can expand that, uh, expand that too. And so we're just really talking with these customers and interviewing them to see what really makes sense to them. You know, some things I'm hearing is they really want peer to peer networking. They really want to hear how their peers um, push the envelope with Drupal uh, to solve their business problems and how do they do that. And um, so, you know, we're just seeing how we can bring these types of customers and prospective customers into the fold and make sure we have the right content for them. So we're doing lots of research right now. And then, of course, we want to uh, use all of our other channels. Uh, it's really important that we start amplifying all the successes that we have so that we can attract uh, the right people to um, Drupal.org and DrupalCon. And one way to do that is to take your case studies and amplify them through Twitter. And so you can see here, uh, University of Chicago's case study was posted on Drupal.org. And uh, now we're amplifying it through um, our social media feeds. And if you uh, received our newsletter uh, in the last 24 hours, then you'll see that we're highlighting um, these case studies in the newsletters as well. So um, if you have a great story, please put it on Drupal.org. Let us know so we can start amplifying it. And then, of course, we want to start telling our stories through our webcast program. Uh, we just did a really great one with Lingotech, who's a supporting partner, and they do translations. And um, it was a great case study around Princess Cruises and how they're using Drupal and Lingotech to better serve their customers. Uh, really powerful story, and we want to get more of these out there. Um, it's definitely a unique position that the association has. Um, is to, to really amplify all the, all the successes that you're making out there in the marketplace. So that's just one of the big areas that we're focusing on um, uh, under my you know, new role as executive director. Um, then our, my next steps uh, with the team is that we're interviewing customers and um, really making sure we can update our, our um, website and um, our events to, to better serve them. Uh, and then we also want to partner with web development agencies, and I should say the hosting companies and um, third-party software. We really want to partner with all of you to make sure we have great content uh, for this audience. And I think if we all come together, we can tell some pretty amazing stories. And again, please let me know of your latest win. I really want to start amplifying the stories and getting the community excited about um, these successes, it really um, rejuvenates them and sees that they're working towards these great um, adoption, um, you know, adoption of their software. Uh, and then, of course, but of course, it just helps attract more customers, prospective customers uh, into the community. Um, and hopefully, as we start working on uh, DrupalCon programs, I can partner with you and we can invite your customers and prospects to DrupalCon. You can use that, again, as a, a sales tool and a way to really connect with them in a meaningful way. So if you have any questions, um, go ahead. You can put them in the chat window. I can't see that, so be, <laughs> you'll just have to let me know if uh, anything comes up. But if there aren't any questions, then I would like to hand this over to Rachel Friesen, and she can tell you a little bit about DrupalCon Dublin. Great. 
Uh, do you want to go to the next slide? Great. So we have a lot of stuff going on in the next couple weeks, actually, with DrupalCon Dublin. Um, so the sessions should be published by the end of the month, which is always really exciting. Um, we also have training sessions that should be announced very shortly. Um, and one thing I want, really want to point out is that early bird tickets, um, that discount will expire at the end of next week. So at midnight Dublin next Friday, um, the ticket prices go up 100 euro. So it's uh, important to get your tickets before then and save a little extra money. Uh, there are still sponsorship opportunities for DrupalCon, and you can email us there at sponsor at association.drupal.org if you're interested in different ways that you can support um, DrupalCon or the Drupal community. There's um, a bunch of different ways that, that people can uh, join in the fun there. And one thing I want to talk about specifically is something new that we're offering this year, which is our DevOps Summit. Um, if you go to the next slide. <clears throat> So the DevOps Summit came about because we've heard quite a bit of chatter around DevOps, especially in the Drupal community. And um, we are really excited that Bastion is uh, leading the charge on this. Um, we have some more information on the website. And when you send out the slides, there will be, um, I added links in here to find out more about Bastion and also about the event, um, including a more detailed agenda, which should be out in the next week or so. Um, but essentially, the event should focus, or will focus on tearing down the imaginary wall between operations and development teams. So basically finding ways that people can work together um, to share uh, knowledge and best practices uh, and really do some great peer learning. Go to the next slide. So who should come? Uh, this is a great question to ask. So essentially anyone that's interested in how uh, they can implement DevOps principles, so sending um, technologists, uh, sysadmins, uh, developers, even CTOs, anyone who's interested in DevOps and kind of where that's headed and what people have learned in, in the last year or year and a half. Um, the tickets are on sale now for 199 euros, which is a great price. Um, and we expect this event to be very popular, so I'd recommend grabbing tickets uh, sooner rather than later. And then one other thing that's happened since um, I made these slides, which is really exciting, is we have announced our community keynote. Um, so on Thursday morning, um, you may know him on uh, D.O as, as Enzo, but in real life, Eduardo spent the last few months traveling the world, visiting various Drupal communities. We're really, really thrilled that he's going to be presenting on what all he learned from his time uh, traveling to different communities, going to different summits or camps or meetups or whatever that he could find along the way, and uh, his recommendations on ways we can expand and grow uh, how connected our community is. So it should be very exciting. I think that's it for DrupalCon. That's great. Well, I'm really excited about your new addition with the DevOps Summit. I think yeah. it's a great way to make that developer event even stronger. Yep. Yeah. OK, excellent. Well, thanks, Rachel. Well, then why don't I turn it over to you, Tim? You can talk about uh, the recent Drupal.org improvements. Sure. Um, there's kind of a lot of stuff to talk about over the last quarter, so I'll be giving some updates on some work that um, we had started in the previous quarter, as well as um, things that are completely new in the last couple of months. Um, and just a, by way of introduction, you may also know me if you're on Drupal.org. I am Hestanet, um, and you'll see me in the issue queues and updating our roadmap. Um, and I'd be very happy to hear from you if you have any thoughts on uh, our roadmap, on these items, or if you'd like to get involved, or uh, if you have developers who work with you who'd like to get uh, involved uh, in the work we're doing. Um, so to um, kind of start off, the, uh, the big milestone in April was the release of Drupal 8.1. This was the first release of a new six-month release cycle for Drupal, the software. So, um, the uh, community came together and established a, um, a new practice for our release cycle for Drupal, wherein every six months there would be a uh, point release, um, uh, a new minor release of Drupal, and this would include um, major features and API changes. And this means that Drupal can evolve much more quickly than during the Drupal 7 development cycle. Um, there's now a... Um, uh, a, a pattern for introducing these new features, these new API changes, um, and for ultimately uh, transitioning deprecated APIs into new APIs. So it's a, it's a really big deal for the project in terms of um, creating a faster pace of change um, and moving towards an evergreen Drupal um, that is modern and up-to-date. So um, to support this, there was actually quite a bit of work on Drupal.org to um, manage just the, the, the project management side of taking all of the issues opened against core, um, migrating them to the 8.2 branch if they're not complete, providing support for development branches for these minor releases and a number of things. There. So the team did a lot of work just to enable that for the core developers. 
And um, we should be seeing the next um, point release, Drupal 8.2 in October. Um, again, coming with new, uh, new important features and APIs for the software. So uh, if we move to the next slide. Um, one of the uh, other things that we introduced was JavaScript testing for Drupal. Um, we added PhantomJS support to Drupal CI. Um, this is important in a number of different ways. Um, basically, it helps us test JavaScript interactions in Drupal in the software. And if you look at the next slide, um, that's going to enable um, several of the major initiatives. These are, um, these are the D8 initiatives that Dries presented um, at New Orleans um, as uh, kind of coming up in the point release cycle for Drupal. And several of these initiatives, the data modeling initiative, the blocks and layouts initiative, and the media initiative in particular, are dependent on rich user experiences, which will be driven largely through JavaScript. And having that ability to test JavaScript interactions in the software is going to mean the ability to iterate on that and start improving the user experience of Drupal. Um, which is an important priority for um, increasing adoption. Um, if we go to the next slide. Um, as was, I believe, mentioned in the last update, we had just begun work on uh, providing support for Composer repositories. Composer is the command line de dependency management tool for uh, PHP projects. Um, and uh, Last quarter, we were uh, moving towards an alpha release of Composer. Uh, as of right now, we have uh, released the beta. Um, we're moving towards stable. It's just a matter of uh, bug fixes, essentially, at this point. Um, the beta implementation of Composer is in, in production use at enterprise scale. We are aware of a number of customers who are already using it to manage hundreds of websites. Um, whoops. Sorry about that. Lost our slide there a little bit. Um, so we're really happy with this. Um, uh, it's, uh, it's a great feature. It helps make Drupal part of a modern PHP worked well. Um, and we're uh, kind of excited to see where it goes. One of the areas that you might see activity on in the future is using composer-based workflows for distributions, for example. So moving on. Um, one of the other things we did is we communicated a little bit about the um, visual language that we've been using as the basis for any work that we do that touches the design on Drupal.org. Um, so this is, um, this is not a specific feature release, but this is just to show you um, how we are going about creating a more consi consistent and coherent um, design experience um, and visual experience of using the site. Um, to try and make it more user friendly. You'll see a couple little sneak previews in this slide. For example, the user icon up in the upper right corner, um, a better user menu is uh, about to uh, be released. Um, you see the documentation pages um, being kind of previewed here. If we go to the next slide, um, in the past quarter, we had been working on developing a new documentation system for Drupal, the old book page format was uh, getting long in the tooth, a little bit clunky and hard to navigate. And so uh, we've finished the majority of that development, released the features to Drupal.org, and with a volunteer, we've been assembling a volunteer team to start migrating documentation. So you'll start to see this new documentation format with its improved navigation um, around the site very soon. Um, maintainer uh, Documentation now has the concept of maintainership. Um, like, like projects do, so that we can have dedicated community volunteers who ensure that the documentation has good editorial control, um, has a, a good quality standard, and is kept up to date. So there's a lot of good things happening there. Um, and at this point, it's, it's largely a community effort to, to move forward that migration process. So um, we could continue. Um, another thing we did is we released some small updates to the issue credit system. Um, since the initial release of issue credits on Drupal.org, um, this is a, the ability for users who, who work on issues on Drupal to attribute that work to uh, an employer or a customer. Um, since we've seen that introduced, we've seen kind of an incredible revitalization of the contribution economy, I'll say, around Drupal. A lot of um, shops and end user organizations all um, getting excited to have their developers start making those attributions. Um, they use it as the 
uh, ranking system for the marketplace based on issue credits. And it's, it's just been a, a really remarkable change. So we want to continue caring for that system um, and making careful changes that help improve it and keep it a clean system. So we introduced two new tools that the maintainers who grant credit can use. Um, they can grant credit to users who might, maybe haven't commented in the issue. And that means that if there's internal teams working on an issue, but only one of them is actually updating it on Drupal.org, they can still credit those users. If someone is helping out in IRC, in Slack, uh, at sprints, uh, in a channel other than the issue queues, they can still be credited in their organizations, can still be credited for the work that they've done to support um, uh, these contributions. Um, we've also taken some steps to prevent gaming the system uh, in terms of uh, just some tools that let the maintainers um, control uh, patch submissions that aren't actually contributions or, or other ways that people might be trying to game the rankings because we want to protect the integrity of those people um, out there who are really making important contributions. Um, we continue to the next slide. We also added a couple very small things along the way um, that will hopefully have a, a pretty decent impact. Um, so there's a supporting technologies listing in the marketplace now, which lists um, organizations that are supporters of the association, but that provide services that we haven't um, explicitly highlighted as a category in the past. These are complementary technologies to using Drupal. Um, these could be things like CDN providers, monitoring providers, um, all sorts of technology providers whose tools are tremendously useful to anyone who's working with Drupal, um, but it's not a feature of Drupal directly. So we wanted to find a place to promote their services um, and that complementary technology. Um, we've also just made small improvements to how the navigation for project releases go, um, friendly path aliases, and we've done some work to prevent spam account registrations on Drupal.org because it's an efficiency drain, both on, uh, somewhat on our team as the kind of curators and caretakers of the community um, and on the community volunteers who have to um, either manage spam or work around it as they're doing the other work that they're doing in the queues. So we put together a couple, couple tools that have actually dramatically uh, impacted the ability of, of spammers from even creating accounts on the site. It's a really great improvement. Um, we continue. I think that's most of the update. Um, uh, I want to say thank you from the engineering team because we get a lot of support from the community and from organizations uh, individually. People reach out to me all the time to, to thank us for the work that we're doing. Um, I want to add one more thing. Um, we have a community initiatives program where um, community volunteers or even um, organizations who want to drive forward a particular idea um, create these community initiative proposals and use them to work with us um, and, uh, and create improvements. So one of those initiatives that's under, actually, in fact, adding composer support began as a community initiative. Um, but one of those other initiatives uh, has been to improve the project application process. Um, I'll try not to get into all the weeds, but basically there's a manual peer review process before a new contributor can make a full module release on Drupal.org. Um, and that's something of a barrier to contribution right now. So we have worked with the community and we have a way to remove that barrier entirely. And we're excited to implement that um, as we head in towards Dublin. So. That's great. Well, thank you, Tim. Definitely an impressive amount of work you guys have been getting done, especially as a smaller team. So thank you. Yeah. Okay, well, that is our update for this quarter. Um, I'd love to hear from all of you about um, other bits of news you'd like to hear about or if there's other topics you want us to cover. Um, or if you have ways that uh, we could better support you, I'd love to hear about that as well. So please know you can reach out to me anytime. If you wanna um, stay connected, uh, you can also just make sure you're signed up for our newsletter and of course our social media at Drupal Asos. Um, and I know you have uh, account managers you can reach out to. So Delana, if you are a web development agency, um, or Mark, if you are a hosting company or third-party software. So please know you can reach out to them anytime and, um, and uh, we'll get your questions answered or just help you in any way. So thank you so much for your time and all of your support. We're really excited what we can do together. So if there are any questions, uh, you can send them through the chat. And V can uh, let me know if any come in. 
Sure thing. Uh, we don't have any so far, but we'll give them a minute to type and go from there. Great. All right, a little awkward pause there. I'm gonna assume there are no questions, so I'm just gonna bring this home and, and say once again, thank you for everything that you're doing to support the community and especially for supporting us and looking forward to giving you another update uh, in Q4. Thanks again. Thanks everyone.